Hey Forge members, Anthony here and welcome to the fifth tutorial in our React series. In this video we're going to take a bit of change of pace. What we are going to be doing is we're going to look into the lifecycle methods of a component. Now if you're not familiar with lifecycle methods, don't worry, that's what this video is for. Essentially we want to see what happens from the very first moment a component is rendered onto our screen to the moment that it is not. Essentially, we have to look at a diagram like one of these guys. So when a component is created on your screen, that is referred to as mounting. And when it is pretty much uncreated, or let's say, for example, you close the page or for whatever reason you have to unrender that component, it is called unmounting. And everything in the middle is known as updates updating and in this video we are pretty much going to be looking at the main the main lifecycle methods here so we're going to be talking about exactly what happens uh in the constructor why the constructor is used um what this sort of what these weird functions uh component did mount component did update and component will unmount is and we're going to look into that in detail so first things first i'm going to come into our uh directory so we have our example uh uh, we have the example project that we made for the last four tutorials. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new React, uh, uh, a new React project. So using the Create React app, let's call this Lifecycle. Um, and the reason we're creating this is because I don't want to sort, I don't want to get rid of this example, and I want to be able to show you how all these lifecycle methods work uh, within an actual React component, or sorry, within a new React project. Awesome, our React project has completed initialization and I've gone ahead and opened it in my VS code. So if I go to, so you'll remember from the earlier videos, this is just pretty much all the templated code again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete the templated stuff. Um, I'll, I'll empty the uh, app.js. We don't need the app.css anymore, or we can keep the CSS. Uh, we don't need the logo anymore, and pretty much everything inside of this div, I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna make a header, and I'm gonna say this is our new React project. Uh, and I can go ahead and delete the logo file as well. And let's go ahead and start it. So npm start. So while this starts, what we're essentially going to do is we're going to create a new component and we're going to put all the sort of lifecycle uh, testing inside of there. And this cycle testing, it, it's easy to sort of go onto the React documentation and sort of read and understand what's happening here, but it's a lot more clear if you actually do an example uh, with everything I'm about to show you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Let's create a new component called uh, lifecycle.js. We're going to use our uh, React plugin to just um, create a default, uh, create a default component for it. We're going to move the export default. Not that it will really matter for this video, but um, just in practice, move that down here, and we're going to say we're going to have maybe an H2 saying this is our lifecycle component. By the way, I'm just naming it lifecycle uh, just because we're using it to uh, express, uh, we're using it to like test out the lifecycle methods. It doesn't like, you could pretend this is like any component, like our counter component or anything like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the lifecycle, oops, and I'm just going to lifecycle Oops, I imported that wrong the first time. Cool. So now if we come back, this is our new React project and then our lifecycle component is inside of here. So remember in the previous videos, we always had a constructor. Within that constructor, we always passed in, oops, we always passed in the props and inside of there we called super props. So I'm finally gonna explain uh, why we do all of these things. So first of all, a constructor is pretty much uh, if you have learned Java or you are familiar with object-oriented programming, a constructor is pretty much the very, very, very first thing that runs whenever a class is initiated. And in this case, our class is our uh, component. So if we go back to this diagram here, we can see when a component is mounted, aka 
uh, when a component is created for the first time, or when a component is created and it from non-existence, the very, very, very first thing that runs is the constructor. Now, in every constructor, just like Java, you have to call super. Now, we're so whether you call super with props passed in or not doesn't really make a difference unless you're actually uh, using props. So the reason we pass in props into this constructor is if we ever need to use the props specifically in the constructor. Say for example, we are setting our state equal to a map and let's say uh, state var1 is equal to this dot props dot something something something. If we want to do something like that, we have to pass in props to our constructor as a uh, as a variable. If we do not do this, we will not be able to access any of the props within the constructor. However, it's worth noting, if we choose not to pass in props into our constructor, we will still be able to access props in other functions. So it's very good to, to know that. So unless you have to use uh, the props inside of your constructor, you don't actually have to pass this in, but you still have to call super. So as you can see here, um, all we are doing is pretty much calling a constructor and initiating our state to a blank, uh, to a blank dictionary. So now let's go ahead and um, add, let's say, a counter. And let's, let's create a counter for how many times the state has changed. So we can have a counter and initialize it to zero. And over here, uh, we can make some uh, h3s. Uh, h3 headers and we can say uh, current counter current change counter current state change counter is this dot state dot counter now if we were to save it and come back we can see that uh, as expected our counter is initi uh, initialized to zero so the second thing that happens in our mounting process is it renders the React updates the DOM, and then we get to this component did mount function, uh, which is what I want to talk to in detail. Don't worry too much about uh, these two intermediate steps for now. So component did mount is a function you can add inside of a React component that will run after uh, the component is quote uh, mounted and it will only run once because the component only mounts once and what we can do there um, is we can specify any changes we want to make so if you're for example using API calls uh, for your let's say we had a weather variable and our weather variable was like the degrees in Celsius in like Toronto for example uh, we can set the initial weather to just zero degrees Celsius as a default and then in our component <clears throat> did mount function um, in our component did mount function, we would then uh, we could then have our whole uh, API calls. Uh, we could create a REST call, uh, a GET request to uh, some weather API, and then update the state with uh, with whatever the results are. Now, note in production level apps, you would actually use something like Redux. Uh, and Redux Saga to take care of that type of stuff. But just for this example, I want to show you some of the things that can be done within the component did mount. Um, so let's say in the component did mount, let's have a let's have a string. So let's say uh, a display string, and let's initialize uh, let's initialize this display string to uh, we are in the constructor. So we can initialize to that, and then under here, we can just make an h4 now. Sorry if this is getting a bit confusing with all the text and stuff. Actually, we can remove the, this is our lifecycle uh, method. Actually, no, I think that's fine. Uh, just to give a differentiator between our app uh, component and our lifecycle component. So then in here, we can say the current display string, and then just do this, dot state dot display string. So we can see here, our current display string is we are in the constructor. Um, now, if in the component did mount, we did something like this dot set state, and we set the display string equal to um, we are now in the component did component did mount. We can see here 
the we are now in the component in mount will be the thing uh, that is last displayed because our display string is now equal to that because our component in mount calls after uh, the constructor is done. So our counter is still, we can get rid of this weather. That was just for, uh, no, <laughs> just to explain how this works. Uh, the thing here is our counter is still uh, zero. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into the next section, which is the whole updating process. So we see here there are, th so in, in the previous example, when we were mounting, the only way uh, this sort of mounting process got started is when you call uh, that component from a different component. So you pretty much nest it in there. So because we are dis we have our lifecycle component inside of our app, this uh, tells pretty much our React app that we are rendering, that we are mounting this component uh, in the DOM. And what happens there is it goes through that whole mounting cycle. So it calls the constructor, the render, the updates, and then the component in mount. Now updating works a bit differently. There are three different triggers uh, that will cause our component uh, to update. The first one is whenever the props that are currently being passed into, uh, that are currently being passed into the component, whenever they get updated. The second trigger is if something calls set state again. So I'm not sure if you've ever wondered this, but when I was first learning React, I was looking at the whole set state function and I was like, okay, why do we have to call whenever we want to change a state variable? Why do we call, you know, this dot set state as a function and then pass in a new dictionary instead of just saying this dot state is equal to whatever, uh, the same way we did in the constructor. And the reason for that is, this, if we just simply set the state variable like this, it will not actually trigger this component did update. Uh, it will not actually trigger the updating flow. Whereas, um, and, and that's what the sort of set state function is made to handle. So whenever we set this dot set state, we are actually also triggering uh, this updating flow. And the final time we trigger this updating flow is with something called force update. So um, there are certain cases where uh, you might want to force an update on your component, which will uh, re-render everything and, and run the component did update. Um, it's not uh, it's not usually used that often, but uh, it's just something to know for your reference that you can actually uh, force an update on the component from anywhere within the component. Uh, obviously, that isn't uh, the render. So let's go into testing this. So let's create a component did update component did update. Oh, and by the way, you can actually see, so like I said, we're only going through the three main uh, lifecycle methods here, but if you type component, you can actually see uh, uh, VS Code will actually give you all of them. So for example, components did, uh, component did catch, uh, component will mount, um, a component will receive props, components will unmount, component will update, uh, and there's a couple other. Um, I believe the should component update is deprecated now, but if you, uh, so I would recommend if you have time, just going over those ones in your spare time, but for now, we're just going to, uh, focus on the main ones and all the other ones should become really easy to once you understand these main ones. So let's go ahead and create a component did update function. And what we can do here is we can let's, let's console log and say, the component just updated. So now whenever the component updates, if we come back to our app, we can see here, uh, the component just updated was called. So I want you to take a second, think about, so all we did was sort of refresh the page. And when we refresh the page, all that happened was we started this mounting process for our component. Um, can you actually figure out where uh, where the component updated flow, where the updating flow actually started from our original code. Take a second. So where it actually triggered was because of this set state. Remember, uh, when we call set state, it triggers this updating flow. So what happened is we, uh, so our component started the mounting process. We called the constructor uh, and we created the state variable with the default values. We then rendered um, rendered that. We uh, we ran our render to return it onto the screen, and then we um, we ran our component did mount function, which called a set state, and this set state function then triggered an update, uh, which. 
uh, re-rendered everything, and then it uh, it ran our componented update, which uh, console logged. So some of you might be wondering, well, what happens if we add a set state within the component did update. Will that just create an endless loop of updating over and over again? Let's try it out. So this dot, let's say this dot set state and let's increment the counter. So let's say the counter is now equal to counter plus equals uh, oh, this dot state dot counter plus, uh, plus one. So whenever it updates, we wanna increment this update counter. So let's see what happens here. So as you can see, we actually did get an error. Our maximum update death has been exceeded. So what was happening was we were calling the set state function within component did update. And what that did was it called the updating flow again over and over and over again. And we got into an endless loop, which eventually um, hit the limit of uh, nested loops, uh, nested updates we could possibly have and called our whole a uh, React project to uh, fail. So there are a couple of different ways to mediate this sort of infinite loop, uh, but one of the ways is making sure you wrap things inside of your component did update that edits the state or would normally trigger another component did update uh, within a conditional statement. So some sort of if statement. So let's say for example, uh, we have a variable in our state called did update and we initialize that to false. Whenever we, uh, or let's actually do it, um, did display string update, even though that name is a lot longer. So what we can actually do is whenever our display, whenever we update our display string, we can set our did display string update to true. And we can actually wrap all of this around in a conditional statement. So we only update the counter whenever our uh, display string uh, was updated. So if this dot state dot did display string update, is uh, equal to true, then what we are gonna do is we are gonna run this, and within this, uh, we are also gonna set uh, did display string update to false so that it doesn't trigger this again. So now if we were to save this and go back to our app, we can see here uh, the counter is set to one um, and we are not in an infinite loop of any sorts. This ran one time and then stopped. So I've gone ahead and I've uh, got a random, uh, string generator off of Stack Overflow. I'm going to quickly uh, add this in here because what we're gonna do is I'm going to create a button that every time I click it, it will change the display string to a random string. And we're gonna see how the component did update actually deals with that. So uh, what we can do here, so let's uh, properly format this. Okay. So let's test out that this random code that we got of Stack Overflow works. So uh, let's just, in our component in map, let's console.log a call to this make ID um, uh, with, we can even uh, actually put it outside of our class. And that way, and then let's just get a random string of five characters. So, uh, oops, forgot to give it. A, uh, there we go. Forgot to uh, name it as const, declare it. So we can see there that works. So whenever the component mounts, we're just console.logging uh, generate random string. We'll rename it so it's a bit easier to understand. Uh, we're randomly generating a, a, a string uh, of five characters. So let, let's change that to like eight, just so it looks a bit nicer. So now I'm gonna create a button. Uh, so let's create a function actually. Let's create a function, and this function is going to be called uh, uh, change display uh, handle change display string, and that's going to pretty much um, all it's going to do is we're going to uh, new display string. We're going to create a const called new display string and make it equal to um, this uh, an eight character string that we get from this uh, Stack Overflow string generator. Um, and then all we're gonna do is this dot, oops, this dot set state, and we're gonna make the display string, display string equal to the new display string. And we are gonna 
like we did before, set the did display string update to true so that we know that we updated the display string. And now all I'm going to do is create a button. Uh, a button and let's it'll say like uh, generate a new display string and the on click function as we learned in the first couple tutorials uh, will be equal to this dot what's it called again handle cool so now we can see here we have a, a generate new display string when we click it not only will the display string uh, uh, get modified, but our counter, the thing that triggers on our component did update, uh, will will trigger every single time. So finally, if we go to the last uh, lifecycle method, we pretty much have this unmounting. So in component will unmount, there's not really any good examples right now that I can use to show you, um, that I could use to, I guess, show you uh, how this would work. Um, but essentially, if for whatever reason you are getting rid of your component, um, this function will run uh, right before the component is gone, pretty much. Uh, so, I guess one way we could use to sort of illustrate this is, first of all, uh, uh, let's go back to our app and um, let's have maybe a little, uh, let, let's add a constructor here. We'll call super and we'll say this dot state equals and, and we'll have a variable to show the lifecycle component. So show lifecycle component and we'll initialize that to true. So then we'll have a function uh, that toggles it. So handle toggle uh, show lifecycle component. My naming conventions have not been very good for these videos, uh, but you get the idea. Um, and what it'll do is we'll just set this dot set state, and we'll set uh, show life cycle to uh, not sh so whatever the opposite this dot state uh, so whatever the opposite of it is. So whenever we call this function, uh, this state variable will toggle from true to false to true to false to true to false to true to false. So now let's add some logic. So uh, this is our new. Uh, let's create a button that calls it. So on click equals this dot handle. Okay, and let's say uh, click this button to uh, to talk to um, hide or show the life cycle component component. And what we'll do is uh, we'll create one of those uh, conditional statements. So we'll we'll create squiggle. So we did this in the last video. We'll create some squiggly box. We'll say uh, th uh, this dot state dot show life cycle components. Um, and if it is true, we'll have one thing here. And if it's not, we'll have another thing here. So if it is true, we want to, uh, show life cycle. And if not, we can just create, uh, an empty div, uh, that will show nothing instead. Cool. So now if we go back to our react app, if we click this button, it will, uh, toggle it will toggle our lifecycle component. So it will either show or hide our entire, our entire lifecycle component. But you should know it's not only just um, toggling it. Remember, uh, when we update something, it re-renders it. So when our, uh, when, if this uh, sh uh, show lifecycle component is false, we rerun this render component. And because our lifecycle, uh, co because this line of code never gets executed because of our conditional statement, our lifecycle component actually doesn't get rendered at all. And if our lifecycle component once existed, the act of now being not non-existent is actually unmounting uh, the lifecycle component. So pretty much what I'm trying to say is, <clears throat> let's say we when if our lifecycle component is currently being shown and we click this button and all of a sudden it's not being shown, for that to happen, we first have to unmount this component. So now if we go back in here, uh, we see here the component will unmount. We can console.log and write something like the component component is now being unmounted. Goodbye. And what will actually happen here if we inspect element, if we were to, if we were to trigger this um, button, we will see here that the last thing that happens before that component is unmounted and gone, uh, it runs the, it actually runs the um, 
component will unmount function and uh, it console.logs this component is now being unmounted in goodpy and if we bring it back and we do it all again it'll do the same thing so I hope that gave you a good idea of sort of the general understanding of how the component lifecycle works and uh, the three most useful component uh, lifecycle functions. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I'm going to be in the next video talking about routing. So uh, for example, if you see a page that has different, um, uh, so for example, if we go to the React documentation, we can see here if I click, uh, if I click this all of this stuff will uh, change and the URL will change, but nothing else changes. I'm going to talk about how to do that um, and how to make the URL change as well so that if you were to copy and paste uh, this and send this link to someone, uh, they would come to, uh, to this screen where this would be the thing that is rendered in for this component. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.